Let's talk herd. Yeah, so I think it is quite a, it's quite a big question to ask oneself, you know, to be in a situation like this where you're, you're opening yourself and you're being authentic. And I think some people are able to, they kind of have a script that, they go by and they're quite well trained in that and so they can yeah this is a, a pretty microcosmic glimpse of, of of a it's almost like a microscope of um, an opportunity to choose to make a choice, you know, of how clear the intention is, mm. of how to show up moment to moment. And the falling back upon a script or a um, kind of um, something that's a programmed type of response that's been stored in the, in the conditioned pathways is a is something that is like a um, a life preserver yeah, um, exactly but to Strip oneself away of projecting into the psychic space an mm. identity of this is me and I am this. This is me and I am this. And to enter into the moment naked as uh, the open moment. Like, I am the open moment. Meeting the open moment. Yeah. That's how the horses meet us. And they're asking and they're yearning to be met that way. And you're feeling that same yearning. You know, um, as you come forth in these types of dialogues. One thing that I've noticed about the way that you show up is that you do not project mm -hmm. any identity of yourself into the space. And then your energy is not taken up with projecting energy into that to keep it alive and to uphold that identity and to polish it and to make it shiny. Mm. And it's very it's a it's a real a mastery if you will, of surrender, like an inner posture, an inner asana, an inner yoga, like right, like teddy, right there. Just, it could be child's pose, it could be corpse pose, but it's not tree pose. It's not tree mm -hmm. pose where you have to have the perfect balance points so you're not thrown off. It's not mountain pose where you're making sure that you are vast and completely perfectly rooted grounded and embodied. <laughs> it might be a little bit of all of them, but, but it's really child's pose, I would say. Is, is, um, 
a child's pose that you know engages wisdom. That's a lie, like a lie. Mm. Yeah, it. Yeah, that's a very beautiful way to describe it because it it can sometimes feel a lot clumsier than that. Like, like almost like putting every thought out, you know out of out of my mind and then there's like a a sense of there being nothing there and and so what I do is I listen to the person so that they will trigger some thoughts you know like I don't know what I'm gonna say and that happens that does happen and when that happens it's really it's really you know, it's lovely because it's, a, you know, it does feel like a true exchange and and it's a little bit scary as well because it's just, you know, what if I do sometimes I don't think, like if I can't stay, I have to stay present, otherwise I don't, things don't, you know, thoughts don't come, so it's, yeah. But it's nice to think about it like that because it makes it feel like something rather than nothing. <laughs> like a Yeah, like it has a purpose. And it's Yeah. Because I think this really reminds me of an experience I've had over the last two weeks. We know someone who is he's a dear friend. He's a farmer. So he's, and he's not a horse person, or he was a farmer. He's retired and he's been ill. He's been quite ill and he's on chemotherapy at the moment. And he's really you know, almost faded away physically and he has terrible anxiety and recently he got in touch and he asked to come and see the horses which was already a miracle because he felt that the herd could help him and he doesn't understand what I do or, you know, this whole thing at all, I don't think. Maybe he sees some things on Facebook but he, so he came the first time we went out there and I didn't know what to expect and so, you know, we were just present and he was very weak and kind of had just, we took ages to shuffle out there and and then the horses were there and they were going somewhere. They were going from one barn to the other at that time, but they all just slowly slowed down and just turned gradually to face him so that by the end of the time we spent together I realized that all of them were in a parallel um and they were staying they were like facing him and I was just talking to him about how to breathe and how to feel the earth and how to let the horse's energy come in to him and breathe out the anxiety, you know, simple ideas. And and then I realized that there was this energy that was just so, all I can describe it as is soft. It was just like the softest of soft. And it was just, it was coming like mist from the heart, from all of the horses and just coming like mist. And it was just embracing him and he felt it. That was what was so beautiful. And he talked about how he, you know, that how I talked to the horses and that they'd produced this and and they'd come and they'd connected and it was really beautiful. And so then, so that was all, that was a miracle and it felt amazing and it felt very secure and safe because it was, and it almost felt like, 
that would just be perfect if that was it, if that was the, the journey. So then he rang again and he wanted to come today. And so he came today. This time the horses were a lot further away. They were like a couple of feet, you know, they were the furthest they could possibly be. We had a hunt this morning, which does, it kind of just creates a lot of chaos and anxiety. So we took a long time. We went down there, not right into where they were, but opposite them, opposite the fence. And they were like, who's this? You know, you know, maybe it's to do with the, the haunt. And they were quite full of energy. And, and there was definitely a sense of having to let go of all of those expected, of that perfect first time, of that first yeah. miracle. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just to, just to allow this time to happen. Because it mm -hmm. felt a little bit, yeah, there was a slight sense of despair. Like we can't, the horses aren't going to come over and he's going to think. Because he said, oh, the horses aren't coming today. And it's definitely a moment where you have to just stop. And so it's not about what happens. It's about that space of that being present and being in now and this. And so gradually as we found our way back to that, I realized that this was the second stage of his journey. And the first stage he had been so weak and so enveloped, like even enveloped in clothes, that he needed that softness. He needed just to be embraced, so held. And today it was a completely different energy. And, and it just occurred to me, he needs this energy today. It was like this power, you know, that was, and they were, they were quite riled up as well. They were trotting. And I think because they were creating this for him, and so I explained that to him, I said, I think. And, the, and then when it seemed like, and he was much more, he had more energy and he was more vital and he was more, there was more color in his face. And, and so even though it had seemed like, oh my God, we can't reproduce that, we were doing the second stage. And by the end, they'd all turned around and they were all turning in the other direction. And I said to him, I feel like they're, it's difficult because I have to translate it and I can't always get the right words, but it felt like into French for him. And I don't know if he really understood, but I've, what I felt they were doing was creating a vacuum, like a leverage. And they were, they were creating a flow in him because his energetic flow has stopped. It's just sort of stagnant and it's just still. And they were like drawing, they were drawing this flow into him. And then after that, he got quite tired and we walked up. And, but, but it was like he also was satisfied. Like he knew that, you know, that, that this, so, yeah. Yeah, so I guess what I'm that whole story was just to say that it is about the space, isn't it? It's not it's not having to be able to really say anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the mystery of it all. You could feel the mystery. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remember that transmission of first you must dump your all the contents of your mind into the into the earth into the soil and allow all of the preconceived ideas all of the content 
in the mind to be composted. And that is such an act of love. Such an act of love. It opens the space for a, a really true communion between between souls. Mm. Yeah. And to trust that the horses are always doing the right thing. You know, whatever they are embodying is is perfect. There is no you know, there's no need for evidence or mm-hmm. or any sign. You know, like I think we look for signs. We want behaviors that you know that we can, even that we can dis- explain. And I think fun. It is funny because in the end, they always are explained. But it's more of a feeling. Exactly. Yeah, it's the energy of what they're doing but yes yeah it's like when a gust of wind comes at you is there a story is there a story about the gust of wind or is it a feeling of whatever it might be in that moment maybe the wind um swirled up immense amounts of fear in your body, you know. And then and then maybe another gust came and there was another feeling. You know, and every every moment is this teaching of but not a mental a mental like conception of a storyline teaching but an actual, like, energetic imprint of of wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, just that that flow, that pattern that, in a way, I think it speaks through everything. It speaks through every sense that we have and also our sense of energy. And it's... How can it not, really, (laughs) if it exists? How can it not be from source, really? So then we go back to um, safety life preservers. Falling back to cling to um, something that feels safe, something that feels known, something that was touched in the past and is brought into the moment to touch again, and how simply bringing our a soft, a soft seeing to that is enough. You know, it can it can be there too that undiscriminating breathability when you can breathe with that conditioned more contracted as well yeah yeah so I yeah I would love for us to feel into this question of just hope I can define it because I feel it's quite difficult to define. So when we, there's a process of awakening and I feel that that's true for the horses as well. And it's perfect and it's unique and it's individual. And yet, We seem to, we, as humans, we feel that, I think, I feel that we're threatened by, by that on so many levels, like, 
we feel that some some people are less awakened and we want to kind of force them to understand and we feel that what they're doing is wrong because they're not seeing it the way that we are and feeling it the way that we are and then also people who are maybe more awakened or we consider them to be more awakened we feel threatened by that as well because then we feel less less than and I think we just have this idea that there's safety in there's safety in the divisiveness itself. Like that if I say I'm part of this group and all these ones are the same, and that we're against that group because they're different and they do something different, then we're we're safe. Because it seems to happen a lot. So some, it's like there's some kind of, we feel there's some kind of weakness or resistance in appreciating someone else thinking or being in some other place with, like put, to put it in, to create an example to make it clearer. Say we had understood that horses, you know, are happier living with each other and not in stables, but someone else hadn't yet seen that in that way. So their horses were still living in stables and there's still, <laughs> there is this instant wish or desire or I don't know what you would call it but need almost for them to change and for them to understand and for them to see this you know why can't they see and then we use the horses as our justification because we know that you know we decide that the horses are suffering and so I think, I mean, maybe it, the, the, there isn't really, maybe the answer is simply that we're not, we're on our own journey and we don't, it doesn't concern us or it needn't concern us what others do. And they will, you know, just by being how we are, that's enough, you know. There isn't a, a fight to be had. But I feel that there could be some energetic pathways that might help, just help the whole thing. To be less rigid. Mm. Mm. I do feel that um, sitting with a nature being creates an amplification of a field for that kind of contemplation and that self-inquiry and that self-healing and alchemy. So I'm going to come sit with the horse. Yeah, when I when I tune into what I feel my herd would like, maybe I'm tuning into them now, even though I'm not with them. But what I feel they are saying to me or telling me is that whole thing is does not exist. Like that whole plane that we are quite attached to doesn't exist like you don't have to think about any of it you know you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to figure it out and explain in words and no yeah 
it's not real. So like we take ourselves out of our reality when we look at what other people do. And when it, and even when we're, I suppose, with them physically and we feel that, you know, they're doing something different, it's still to think about it in that way isn't real. It's not. There's a, there's a, there's a, re, I suppose maybe it's not that it's not real, but. Well, it's taking it out. I think it's what you were saying. You're taking it out of the root. You're making it secondary when you have to change things and because they're already changing. So, for example, say you, you just spent time with somebody who was very traditional and did things in a way that didn't feel right. That would be enough. Just your energy there your awareness in that moment. So there's nothing other than that. You don't have to, you know, a lot, I think a lot of what we worry about and we want to talk about and figure out doesn't even exist really it doesn't it only exists as a, in our mind yeah. That's a very, very huge realization. Is to feel the flavor of a world that is mind made. It's to feel the flavor of a moment that's um, coated with mind made. And to be curious to see what it feels like when that is set free, that coding is set free, first by seeing that it's there, by catching the feeling tone of it. Yeah, it's a complete transition, isn't it, from one state to the other. It's almost like when you, when you're in one, you you can't really imagine the other, which is why it feels hard when you lose that. Because you're just not, it's almost like it doesn't exist until you're back there. It is because of the intention and the mind-made world doesn't exist there. And a much more creative, richer feel is it emerges and it doesn't just emerge out of nowhere it feels like there's always resonance with our soul's voice and the whole being of the horse if if we were to ask our soul to have a voice and to ask what the soul's intention would be in the moment 
when we immerse ourselves and open ourselves to the field of the, of the horse, there's always a resonant singing between the horse and that frequency of our soul. The resonance, it catches like it in the atmosphere and dances and it starts to grow. Yeah. And that's that field that's not um, mind made, where this incredible creativity and healing and alchemy and clearing. I think there is a, it's, it is a, a mind. It's, it's a mind thing to, to, to always feel that there's a problem or there's a challenge to overcome or there's something more. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a bad thing as such. If it's in alignment with who we are. If it's just allowed to be a, a listening for what feels good, like a listening to that inner guidance. But when it becomes too entangled in thoughts and, and becomes a mission, then I think it, it just becomes unreal. But it's true when you think of horses that naturally they they don't they stay tend to stay in their family unit where they have well worn pathways so they understand each other and they embrace each other and it's quite a rare event to meet a stranger as such and I think that's what can be challenging for us that we're always now especially now with the information age and social media we're always exposing ourselves to different vibrations and different views and opinions and thoughts and and it's so easy to to get lost in that and like lose your center yeah and you'll notice like the horses aren't always or even often resonant with our mind made frequencies of intention. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's even sometimes repelling, but not in a judgmental way, just as energy repels. This is kind of a leap to say. I feel like all you know, the resonance of the soul Hmm. Yeah. Well, all souls, of course, are different. But all souls are subtle. So being around horses like I am with my own soul. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's really true. Yeah, that's, yeah, I'm just thinking of how that is, how it feels when you, when you connect and, yeah. 
it's like there's all that knowing and that knowledge and that wisdom and eternalness, but you but you can't put it into words. It's just you're just back there in that moment. And it just feels like home and rightness and yeah, and you don't even really need to be able to talk about it. Yeah. And, and it um, feels like it's blooming with aliveness and uh, a, a creativity and the energy of the creativity in and of itself is enough. Hmm. Yeah, because it, yeah, I know that I always want to have a plan, you know, of action, like to know the answer and to simplify things down to the answer so it's easy, easier. And I, I don't know that it's always really. I don't think it's really about that in the end. I think it's it's more of a it's more, yeah it's more of a becoming a becoming. The more times that you dip into that place, the more you become that place, and and then what comes from you is in that alignment, and it's not something you can tell yourself or you know write a list about or make a rule about or anything like that. Well, then maybe we could feel the enoughness and then I notice just immense gratitude. Yeah, yeah. That's like kind of full circle back to the beginning. Where we were talking about how the space is enough, or not just enough, but everything. 